again Ruby, Sigrid and Agnes. Well, as promised yesterday, we're starting the second book in the Sophie series today. And this book's called Sophie's Tom. There it is. The first chapter is called In Which Tom Appears. Sophie woke up early on the morning of her fifth birthday. It was still very dark. Usually the first thing she did when she had switched on the light was to look at the pictures hanging on her bedroom walls. There were four of them, all drawn by Sophie's mother, who was clever at that sort of thing. And there's a little picture there of Sophie waking up on her birthday and there are the pictures on the wall. There's one of the cow, you remember she's planning to have a cow called Blossom. One of two hens, April and May. The third was a little Shetland pony called Shorty and the fourth was a spotty pig by the name of Measles. Oh yes, there you see, there's the Measles. You might have noticed one or two other things in the bedroom, which we'll talk about in a minute. These were all the animals that would one day in the future belong to Sophie. For she said she was going to be a farmer when she grew up. And neither Sophie's mother and father nor her seven-year-old twin brothers, Matthew and Mark, doubted for one moment that she would. Because, as we know, Sophie, though small, was very determined. But on this particular morning, Sophie did not spare a glance for her portrait gallery. Instead, she scrambled to the end of her bed and peered over. And there it was. What's that at the end of her bed? Can you see it? Yes, cried Sophie. He's been. And she undid the safety pin that fastened the long bulging woolen stocking to the end of her bed. By now, Sophie was used to the fact that her birthday was on Christmas Day, the 25th of December. The twins, who had been born in springtime, felt rather sorry for her. Poor old Sophie, said Matthew, being born then. That's a bad do, said Mark. Glad we weren't. But Sophie didn't mind. It's twice as nice, she said, when anyone asked her how she felt about it. Everybody gives me two presents anyway, one for Christmas and one for my birthday. It was clever of you, Mum, she had said to her mother once. What was? Having me on Christmas Day. How did you manage it? With difficulty, said her mother, but you were the nicest possible Christmas present. Daddy and I both wanted a little girl very much. Why? Well, we already had two boys, didn't we? What would you have called me if I'd been a boy, asked Sophie. Well, Noel, probably. Yuck, said Sophie. I'm glad I wasn't a boy then. I'm glad I was a girl. This Christmas Day, the sixth of Sophie's life, started off in the usual way. As soon as the grandmother clock in the hall had struck seven, the twins ran and Sophie plodded behind them into their parents' bedroom and they all climbed onto their parents' big bed to show what Father Christmas had brought them in their stockings. Then after, Christmas, after breakfast sorry, came the ceremony of the present giving, all the presents that were underneath the tree. This was always done in the same way every year. Everybody sat down in the sitting room, of course. At least the two grown-ups sat down with their cups of coffee while Matthew and Mark danced about with excitement and, and Sophie stood beside the Christmas tree waiting for the others to sing a very, very important song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sophie. Happy birthday to you. And then... The opening of the presents began, one at a time, youngest first, eldest last. A Christmas present for Sophie, then one for Mark, then Matthew, if you remember, ten minutes older than Mark, then Mummy and then Daddy. And finally, a birthday present for Sophie, before she began again on her next Christmas present. This year, to Sophie's surprise and delight, word of her intention to be a farmer had somehow got round the entire family and both her Christmas and birthday presents reflected this. 
from grandparents and aunts and uncles came picture books of farms and story books of farms and colouring books of farms and best of all from her mother and father there was for Christmas a model farmyard with a cow shed and a barn and some poster and nail, rail fences and a duck pond made of a piece of glass in one corner and for her birthday lots and lots of little model animals cows sheep horses some standing up, some lying down, and a fierce looking bull, chickens, a turkey cock, some ducks for the pond, and even a spotty pig, obviously called measles. And as for a present from the twins, that was absolutely super. Nothing less than a red tractor pulling a yellow trailer. And there's the picture of the tractor and trailer. The tractor's for your birthday, said Matthew, and the trailer's for Christmas, said Mark. What a lovely present, said Sophie's mother. Yes, said the twins with one voice. It was jolly expensive too. Now Sophie felt a bit guilty about this, since her Christmas present to them was the usual one. A Mars bar each, their favourite chocolate. Still, that was all she could manage when she'd finished buying presents for her parents. And afterwards, she'd unscrewed the plug in the tummy of her piggy bank on whose side was stuck a notice. Can you remember? What was the notice? Farm money. Thank you, Sophie. And she found that there were only 70, 70 pence of her savings left. Not even a full pound. At last, there was only one present remaining at the foot of the tree. An ordinary white envelope with Sophie written on it. Underneath... There was some joined up writing that Sophie couldn't read. She'd left it to last because it looked a bit boring. Probably just an old Christmas card, she thought, as she picked it up and handed it to her father. <clears throat> What's it say, Daddy? she asked. It says, Sophie, many happy returns of Christmas Day, love from Aunt Al. Now, Aunt Al, you remember, was Sophie's great, great Aunt Alice, who was nearly 81 years old and lived in the Highlands of Scotland. She had come to lunch one day in the summer and she and Sophie had got on like a house on fire. Aren't you going to open it? asked Sophie's mother. Well, it's just a card I expect, said Sophie. But inside the envelope was another smaller envelope marked farm money. And inside that was a five pound note. There's a picture of it, see. Yikes, shouted Sophie. I could buy a hen with that one. A real one, I mean. April, said Mark. Or May, said Matthew. You wait till you get your real farm, said Sophie's father. This house will be full of animals, if you had your way. After lunch, Sophie set out her model farm on the sitting room floor. She loaded all the animals in turn onto the trailer and then drove the tractor into the yard to unload and arrange them. Excuse grammar a minute. <coughs> I'll just have a drink of my cup of tea to help. You're lucky, she said, holding up the turkey cock. We've just been eating one of your lot. <coughs> Mind you, when I have real turkeys on my farm, I shan't eat any of them. You're going to be vegetarian, asked her mother. No, said Sophie, but you can't eat your friends. I shall eat a stranger from the supermarket. This farm of yours is just going to be a collection of pets, said her father, yawning in his armchair, looking ready for his after lunch nap for Christmas Day, I think. That's right, said Sophie. I like pets. I wish I had a pet now. You're much too young. I'm five. That's much too young, said the twins. I'll buy myself a pet then, she said, with Aunt Al's money. Oh, don't be silly, Sophie, said her father sleepily. I'm not silly, she said. You are, said Mark. I'm not. You are, said Mark. I'm not. Be quiet, Sophie, now, said her mother, and play with your toy farm. Daddy wants his afternoon nap. Sophie put the turkey cock down on the duck pond, as it happened, and stamped out of the room. Hands ran deep into the pockets of her jeans. She followed out into the wintry garden. Excuse me again. <coughs> now I've got a cough, haven't you, today? Her dark hair looked always as though she had just come through her hedge backwards. Her head was bent, there was a scowl on her face, 
And as she walked along the path beside the garden wall, she mouthed the phrase that she always used to describe anyone who upset her. Mild, stupid and acid. I don't know what that means, but she muttered it anyway. That's not what they are. Mildly stupid and acid. Why can't I have a real live animal of my own? Now, there she is. She's looking very grumpy, isn't she, in that picture? Meow, said a voice above her head. And looking up, Sophie saw a cat sitting on the wall. It was a jet black cat with huge round orange eyes that stared down at her. And again it said more confidently, Meow. Then it jumped down trotted up to her with its tail held stiffly upright like that and began to rub itself against her legs, purring like a steam engine. <laughs> Sophie's frown gave way to a huge grin as she stroked the gleaming sable fur. Happy Christmas, my dear Mr Cat, she said. How beautiful you are. I wonder who you belong to. Meow, said the cat. At least that's how it sounded to Sophie. You'll have to wait till the second chapter to find out what happens. Now the cat and Sophie have introduced themselves to each other. Grandma will say bye-bye for now. <coughs>